All right, we've got one more idea to cover in 7.2. So to introduce this one, let's say that your boss wants you to go out and answer this question, what percentage of people prefer chocolate to all other flavors of ice cream, right? So what percent prefer chocolate? And you're, you're like, great, I know how to do confidence intervals for percents, for proportions. So let's say you go out and you gather a sample with a highly scientific survey and you get 12 out of 20 people uh, which is a sample percentage of 60 and you recognize that the real value could be higher or lower than that and so you calculate a confidence interval and you get some sort of technology like stat disk and you do confidence intervals for proportion and you say i want 95 percent confidence because no one told me differently and i had out of the 20 people i had 12 okay and you're like great i'm done it's somewhere between 38 percent and 81 percent 21 percent margin of error great and your boss comes back and says not great i need more confidence than that i need a smaller margin of error being off by 21% doesn't cut it for me as a boss. I need a little more accuracy. So you're like, okay, great. I'll, I'll go talk to some more people. So um, let's let's say you, uh, you go and talk to a thousand people. Actually, let's make it 10,000 people. <laughs> and you get six, 6,000, 6,000 saying they prefer chocolate. This is still a 60% uh, result, by the way, but notice, watch what's gonna happen to our margin of error from 21%. Yeah, now it's like less than 1%, right? Because you've talked to a lot more people. We have a lot more confidence in this result. And now your boss is happy, except your boss said, I didn't need it that accurate, and I, I can't pay you to talk to 10,000 people. I don't have that much time. Uh, so, th and this is a pretty realistic, real life situation. This has happened to me some when I've been consulting as a statistical consultant. Uh, the boss will say something like, I need to know within 5% or within 1% or within 10%, uh, how many people should you talk to? Because it makes a difference, right? So if this boss had said something like, I need to know within 3%, Obviously 20 people wasn't enough, and obviously 10,000 people is too much. Uh, the margin of error is way below 3% now. Uh, so we need to, a way to figure out sample size based on a given margin of error. Uh, so that's what we're gonna look at in this last video. And there's actually a formula for this, and we are going to have to use the formula. Right? It's not built into StatDisk. So let's take a look at a formula. This is from the book. It's on page 333. And these formulas look really complicated, and we're going to talk about how to use them and make them not complicated. So there's two different formulas here. They're really the same formula, but we'll talk about that. Uh, let's look at the first one. It says, when an estimate of p hat is known, that's us, right? We started off with a 12 out of 20. We started off with a p hat of 0 0.60. Um, and that's not always the case, right? Sometimes you don't have this initial estimate, uh, but we do, so let's use that. So we're using formula 7.2 right now, and the formula says, I'll tell you the sample size. Keep in mind, that's what N stands for, sample size. And the formula looks like this. There's a couple pieces in here we recognize. P hat, for sure. P hat, we have. Q hat, I don't know if you remember from back in the day when we were looking at the binomial, but Q and P have to add up to one together. So Q hat is just one minus P hat. 
Uh, so in our case, P hat is 60%, so Q hat must be 40%. It's the percent of people that said no to this question, whatever it was. So P hat and Q hat will always um, add to one. Uh, different versions of that multiply differently though, by the way, they, so that it is important to get the right ones in there. Uh, the E on the bottom is the desired margin of error. So that's desired margin of error. And your boss in this case said, I want a 3% margin of error. So do turn that into a decimal, 3% margin of error. And note, don't forget the little squared right here. I kind of obscured that. And then there's just one more number. I know this is a funky, weird looking symbol. Uh, it's written or read as Z sub alpha divided by two, which sounds complicated. And it is a little complicated, but it is just one number that's gonna go in there. And once we have that one number, we will be ready to crunch. So to talk about what Z sub alpha over two means, uh, I'll say, first of all, this is based on the confidence level. Right, when someone tells you I want a 95% confidence interval or a 99% confidence interval, that changes things, right? And uh, let's say your boss, because didn't specify otherwise, wants 95% confidence. Uh, that means you're covering 95% of the curve. So your interval will be exactly as wide as 95% of the curve, which does mean you're leaving out 5% of the curve. All right, so there, there, those two bits together are 5%. Um, and that does mean that each one of them separately is half of 5%. So if I can get a little more specific, I'll say that would be 2.5%, and, and this would be 2.5%. So this 5% in total that you're leaving out, the nickname for that is alpha. Uh, which means that half of alpha is in each one of these tails. So that's where alpha over two, two and a half percent. Uh, that's where the Z sub alpha over two comes in. That's what alpha over two means. It's saying what's the area in one tail that you're leaving off. Okay, so stick with me. We're almost there. So the Z part of that just says how many standard deviations is that from the middle? It's really the way of figuring out how far do you go to cover exactly 95% of the curve. We know it's basically two standard deviations in each direction, but covering 95% of the curve and covering 99% of the curve are a little bit different. So this Z sub alpha over two says how many standard deviations is this? So it's basically that. How many standard deviations is that? We know it's about two. Uh, so let me redraw this picture and say what we really want to know is when we cover 95% of the curve and when we leave 2.5%, I'll, I'll turn it into a decimal, 0 0.025. Uh, when we leave that there, we want to know what's the z-score of that. And fortunately for us, we already know how to find that z-score. It's built into stat disk. This is back from when we were doing the normal distribution. So think back to that. And we said if we want to find the number that separates the bottom 2.5% from the rest, go back to stat disk. 
and we want probability distributions we want normal distribution and we want cumulative area from the left two and a half percent negative 1.96 i'm gonna round a little bit there that finally my friends is the z sub alpha over 2 negative 1.96 i know that seemed like a lot of work but it will get better as we do more of them so let's actually go ahead and finish getting this sample size um, this is the time to grab your calculator So let's see, we need um, we need negative 1.96 uh, squared. That's 3.8416. Depending on your calculator, uh, keep in mind that squaring a negative number gives a positive result. And this is a place where it's easy to accidentally leave the negative sign outside the squaring and get a negative answer. But um, a lot of times when I do this, I don't even use the negative sign because I know I'm going to square that number. So a lot of times I just type 1.96 squared and just get the, the positive answer that I know I'm going to get. So that's about 3.8416 and then times 0.6 times 0.4 um, now we're at 0.921984 and we want to divide that by 0 0.03 squared um, so finally here what I've got is 1024 people actually notice 1024 people isn't quite enough this is the second place in the course. I told you there were two places where you don't round normally, where you round up instead. This is the second one. When you're calculating sample size, uh, you do 1,024. 1,024 is not enough, so let's go 1,025. So you always round up on these. So I'm going to go one. Oops. Let's get this out of the way. Uh, I'm going to go 1,025 people okay and the book even has this written in if you look in the book they'll say if the computed sample size is not a whole number go ahead and round up to the next larger whole number okay I know this video is getting long but I want to do one more example of calculating sample size so let's see let's get one more example and let's say Uh, this time they don't want the same confidence level, so with 90% confidence. They want to calculate the true percentage of people that prefer ice cream or prefer chocolate ice cream. Calculate the true percentage. To within, I don't know, let's say within within 6%. So I want a 6% margin of error. Um, and this time, let's say that we're on this case. We haven't done any survey already. I have no idea what p-hat's going to be. So we're using formula 7.3 now. And notice in formula 7.3, p-hat and q-hat have gone away because we don't know them. Uh, really what they're doing here is just assuming 50-50. That's the most conservative assumption. And 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25. So really when I look at these, I prefer not to memorize or think about two separate formulas. I just prefer to think if p hat is unknown, assume it's 50%. But what that works out to is putting a 0.25 here. So I'll just go ahead and jump to that. I want to know within 6% of the true value 
within 6%. So those two parts of the formula are easy. Uh, we just need to get this funky Z sub alpha over 2 number. Uh, this time I need to have 90% confidence. So you don't necessarily have to draw this little curve every time, but oof, I always think it's a little helpful to me to say if I'm going to cover 90% of the curve, that means I'm going to leave out 10% of the curve total, which means in one tail, or in each tail, 5%. So this 5% is alpha over 2. And when I want z sub alpha over 2, I just go to the calculator, to the, sorry, to stat disk, and uh, put 0 0.05 into the cumulative area from the left, 0 0.05, evaluate. Negative 1.645, I'll go three decimal places. And then it's just time to grab your calculator and actually crunch these numbers. Uh, so let's, and again, I'm not even gonna use the negative sign, I'm just gonna do 1.645. 1.645 squared is about 2.7 and then times 0.25 it's about that number and divided by that's 0 0.06 squared 0 0.06 squared and that works out to 188 people uh, we would round up normally with this but keep in mind we always round up so 188 for our final answer there. You can say, boss, I need to talk to 188 people to get your answer within 6% and with 90% confidence.